Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North Lincolnshire series, a district of 56 parishes in the north of Lincolnshire. Let's see which one we're visiting today. Welcome back to North Lincolnshire everybody. Now this morning I'm beginning in a place called Santon which is on a dead end road. Although you can go a bit further than that dead end if you have authority to. I'm stood at some security gates. Now beyond these gates you can see a railway bridge and underneath that railway bridge you might be able to make out Scunthorpe Steelworks. That's the closest we're going to get to the steelworks in the North Lincolnshire series. And we're gonna drive along this road through Santon towards the main village in today's parish and that parish is Appleby. This North Lincolnshire episode is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find her link in the description. And this video is also sponsored by Jamie's Fitness Studio. Based on Low Road, Grayingham, near Curtin and Lindsay, Jamie is one busy lady. Check her out by calling 07906 749 574 or emailing hello at jamies.co.uk. Online membership is available. There's a link to her Facebook page in the description. Jamie's Fitness Studio. Get fit, get happy, get healthy. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to Appleby, one of the smaller villages in North Lincolnshire and one which sits just to the east of Scunthorpe and to the north of Brig and Broughton. It's a conservation area and it even states that fact on its village signs. It straddles the B1207, the historic Roman road of Ermine Street which once ran directly from London to York. The village nestles on a dipped slope of a limestone escarpment that falls gently towards the river Ancombe to the east. If you cross the Ancombe from here, you're in Saxby All Saints. The village is approximately a mile from the Ancombe across a stretch of agricultural land known as Appleby Cars. It has some stunning houses which line some tree-lined lanes. There's one in particular which we'll see as we walk around which the locals are very proud of. The parish also includes Santon, which is laid out along a dead-end road towards Scunthorpe Steelworks. The village is perhaps most famed for the Appleby log boat, which dates from around 1500 to 1300 BC, found during dredging of the old River Ancombe in 1943. It's one of two prehistoric dugout boats found in the Ancombe, the other being found near Brig in 1886. It's on public display at the North Lincolnshire Museum in Scunthorpe. Let's go for another walk around another lovely bit of North Lincolnshire. Beginning in Santon, this first part of today's episode sees us drive from the steelworks and up into the main village of Appleby. Although Santon looks small, it wasn't all that long ago that this was heaving with industrial activity. Santon is split into two parts, High Santon and Low Santon, and it's where many steelworkers lived. As far back as 1921, steelworkers' houses were built in the area. 
As time progressed, there were many rows of bungalows and villas, and there was even a hostel constructed in a rather hurried fashion. A lot of these buildings were demolished in the 1970s. All that remains now is one row here in High Santon, Santon Villas. At one time, Santon even had things like a school. I've linked a brilliant website below which has all kinds of pictures of how Santon used to look. It was also the location of one of a pair of iron ore mines, which were named Santon Mine and Dragonby Mine. Both closed in 1980. Santon was the first to open in 1938. Our next stop is the B1207, and that's where we find a school. This is Demeter House Lower School, which is a small, family-run special school which caters for vulnerable children, mostly those on the autism spectrum. This part of Appleby is known as the Appleby Station area, and it's separated from the main village by about half a mile of open road. The station, now long gone, was opened by the Trent, Ancombe and Grimsby Railway in 1866. Staggered over the level crossing, the station sat between Scunthorpe and Elsham stations, and it was closed in 1967. Okay, so now we're in Appleby itself, and I've planned a route here which covers virtually every street. So, uh, yeah, uh, if I miss anything out in this one, I'll be a little bit surprised. It's a gorgeous little village, this. Uh, never been here before, so I don't really know what to expect. Um, but uh, some of the properties I've seen driving in look really, really nice. So, uh, yeah, I'm expecting this one to be a good one. So let's see what Appleby's got for us. Our route around the main village starts on Hayton's Lane, quite a narrow central street. As we'll see as we walk around, most of the village is made up of 18th century stone cottages and distinctive brick and stone estate cottages dating from the 19th century. We'll also see this a few times. Hayton's Lane crosses a stretch of water known as the Beck, which runs under the village before emptying out into the West Drain on Appleby Cars. At the end of Hayton's Lane is a care home. This is Keb House Residential Home, which comprises an older Victorian-style house and a more modern purpose-built annex. This has 16 single bedrooms and one shared room. This is where we find a parish notice board, although the village hall has one as well further around the route. You can tick Appleby off, folks. 16 left in North Lincolnshire now. There's a lot of trees in this part of North Lincolnshire. As you drive up into Appleby from Broughton, uh, from the M180, you uh, pass through a little forest. I say little, it's actually quite a big forest. And uh, I imagine we'll be learning a bit about that in the Broughton episode. Now here in Appleby, we've got a little gate here in these trees. I wonder what this is all about. It says it's private woodland there. Private, no public right of way, private woodland. I wonder where those gates went once upon a time. Well, I can sort of answer that question. Around here somewhere was Appleby Hall, once owned by the Wynne family. They've been major property owners all over North Lincolnshire since the 16th century. In 1933, the main part of the house was destroyed by fire and its remains were demolished by the Home Guard during World War II. Now let's head for the B1207 again, Ermine Street, the Roman road that Appleby stands upon. A quick look at Risby Road as we pass it, in the distance you can see the top of an old primitive Methodist chapel. It served the village until 1981. Dating from 1906, it was a replacement for an earlier chapel founded in 1894. Back to Ermine Street again, we've got a war memorial on the end of Paul Lane. It takes the form of an oak tree with a granite stone of remembrance placed in front of it. The tree was planted and the memorial dedicated in 1923. So because I'm quite curious, I had a little look at this thing to see what it said. It's not easy to read. Appleby was the best kept village in Lindsay in 1958 and also the best kept village in 2004. 2010 and 2013. That's nice to know, isn't it? And it certainly looks like it today. It's looking very nice. This next section forms a loop around Paul Lane, beginning at the northern end and ending at the southern end. 
Here we see a standalone post box, which is all Appleby has when it comes to the postal service these days. As we walk along Ermine Street for a short way next, we do pass the old post office. Appleby does not have any shops or any kind of retail amenities these days, but its strong community makes up for what it lacks in that department. Next it's Beck Lane, and don't be fooled by this bus stop. If you wait here for one to come along, well, you'll be waiting a long time. There are no services out here, folks. Next is a small green where Beck Lane meets Paul Lane. That's where we find the thatched cottage. Appleby used to have more thatched properties than this. In the 1870s, an outbreak of typhoid fever here prompted the winds to pull them all down. Many of the village's current estate-like cottages replaced them. So this is the other end of Paul Lane, and here the houses are a bit more on the uh, council slash housing association side, not quite sure which. Um, so yeah. We'll turn around at this point and head back past that thatched cottage we saw a moment ago. That's got a, a book exchange, by the way, I noticed outside it. So we'll have a little look in that. Here's that book exchange back at the thatched cottage. Isn't it gorgeous, by the way? As well as this, it's where the thatched cottage ice cream company who sell ice cream and sorbet from Blyton is based. The village hall is the old school. It was built in 1850 by the Wynn family. When the school closed in 1982, the building replaced an old village hall, which was situated at the western end of the playing field. Speaking of that playing field, it's directly opposite. This is used for football matches and boasts a children's play area, a basketball pitch, and some outdoor gym equipment. It can also provide additional village car parking sometimes too. The annual Appleby Country Fair takes place on the playing field as well. I was very intrigued by this, by the way. I have no idea what it would be used for, but nonetheless, it was unique enough for me to capture it. Now, I know we've already seen a parish notice board already, but I thought I'd have a quick look at this one on the wall of the village hall. And what's intrigued me about this is this poster here to do with a music quiz night on Saturday the 17th of September. And it says... The Apple and Bee Inn will be serving all manner of alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages at reasonable prices as usual. Now, as far as I can tell, there's no pub in Appleby, so the Apple and Bee Inn kind of confused me, but then I thought, hang on a minute, maybe it's uh, a pop-up pub, one of these pubs that uh, operates from another building. So I wonder, is the Apple and Bee Inn based here at the Village Hall? It would kind of make sense when you consider that that notice is on the wall of the village hall. Moving on, we've got three more buildings to see. These are the church, the manor house, and this manor farm, which is a long way from the manor house, which you'll find on church side. Here's the manor house. Just before we get to the church, I'll squeeze in this fact. About one mile south of the village is Thornholme, where there was a priory of Augustinian canons founded by King Stephen. Only traces of it remain today. So here we have St Bartholomew's Church, which can trace its origins back to the 13th century. It was partly rebuilt in the 1800s. The exterior is richly adorned with a wonderful collection of beautifully carved gargoyles and grotesques. It's alleged that some of them were based on former village residents. I'm not sure how true that is. It has an hourly striking clock, which was a gift from a farmer who wanted his men working in the fields nearby to hear the passing hours. So from the road, it looked like the door was open, but unfortunately it's not. Um, but uh, we can still have a, a wander around the outside of it. So here at the porch, look at these gargoyles, one on each end of the, the arch. There's one there. And one there. Up above, check out the, uh, the pinnacles. There's a few of those. I always like to see a church with pinnacles. There's some gargoyles up there as well. One on the end there, and one on the end up there. And there's one in the middle. <laughs> oh, two in the middle. Wow. And they're on the tower too. Keeping a watchful eye over the village. 
see what else there is of interest in the churchyard. There might be something of interest in the churchyard, you never know. So we've got a grave over here which seems to stand all on its own. That's oh it's a rector. No Hector, oh sorry. <laughs> I thought it said rector, but it's in memory of Hector Drury Harrison. So uh yeah. You can see why I thought it said rector, can't you? More gargoyles around here, more pinnacles. And a fairly extensive old cemetery. There doesn't seem to be a newer part anywhere unless it's right at the back over there which it could well be uh, this is very old lots of uh, lots of grey stones looking like they've been here quite a few years and a few leaning too Nicky always notices those the ones that lean the ones that look at that one there that one's definitely leaning so uh, yeah that's the churchyard so uh, yeah, let's go back to the road and finish off the route. finish with we're taking a drive along Risby Road so that we can pass the old primitive Methodist chapel. Keep your eyes on the left of the screen as we drive up it as that's where the chapel will be. After it Risby Road then runs out into the countryside and I kept the camera where it is in order to start the next episode. For now I've been Andy also known as the Village Idiot and this has been the gorgeous lovely parish of Appleby and I'm out.